She is Kylan Mills, and she's eating Jack in the Box, folks. That's her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cyrus Sotsis. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms at her name. It's super easy, Kylan Mills. You can follow me on threads at Dog Wild. That's also my handle for Instagram. Kylan, great to see you. How are you doing? And I want to start off by saying congratulations. You are now with, uh, we can now formally talk about this publicly. You're with NBC Sports Bay Area. You're currently hosting the pre and post game shows for Oakland A's broadcast. How is that experience going and how are you? Hey, great to see you, Cyrus. Um, yeah, it's been awesome. Um, on A's broadcast on NBC Sports California, the California Bay Area family. Awesome. Everyone's been super welcoming. Um, so I'm super excited. It, this was just my second day. So, you know, still trying to get into the swing of everything, but like literally best crew ever there. It's been so much fun. So I've been really excited. Uh, but I just got done doing pre and post today for the A's. So that is why I have a chicken sandwich with me is because I worked all day and had not eaten. And I, ordered, I ordered DoorDash when I got home and I'm literally starving. So apologies for being mid bite uh, when we started the show, but I had to get a couple of quick bites in. And by the way, it's a chicken sandwich from Jack in the Box. It's not bad. I never okay. had it. It was just right. like the cheapest, closest thing to order. And I was just like, screw it. I'm just going to, whatever at this point, I'm hungry. <laughs> and Kylan, oh, great to see you. And we're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it light. It's the off absolutely. season, but we're, we still got stuff to talk about. Okay. Sorry. Absolutely. One more bite. <laughs> no, you're good. Take your bite. I, I just want to uh, let people know on that note, you are one of the hardest working people I know. Um, and, and you are proof. And I, and I tell my students this as a professor and I, and I tell any young aspiring uh, sports media professional this. Hard work pays off in this industry. It pays off in most industries, but yeah. especially in this industry. If you think you can half-ass it, you you have no chance in hell. Um, you're gonna you have to grind. And sometimes you have to grind for decades. I mean, you you just have to say yes to everything. And yep. and yeah, so you're doing it right. Congrats. Um, Thank you. Yeah, all and good there. And that's all good uh, advice. And I'm glad that you're one of the people who's leading the future of journalism and, and teaching <laughs> Try youngsters. Cause that's, that's the right message. At the end of the day, it is, it's a grind. You have to sacrifice a ton and you have to work hard um, to move up in your career. So, cool. but yeah, I'm really excited to be joining them and it's been fun bringing some entertainment days, baseball, but Warrior season's right around the corner. And I am very excited about that. I mean, we're Absolutely. getting closer. We're getting closer. The off season has felt long. It's felt slow since the Warriors got eliminated you know, during the Western Conference semifinals. So like it's felt a little bit longer this year and because it has been and I'm yeah. ready for the season to come. Absolutely. Genji Gawk, by the way, is writing that uh, the, the chicken sandwich is pretty good, but avoid the crazy sauces. So uh, there you mm -hmm. go. That's some advice for, for Jeff if you're consuming. First couple bites were actually pretty good from what I just tried. It wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. So not a bad choice. <laughs> Are Jack and Box tacos still good? I, I remember that being a, in my 20s when I was crazy and, and doing all sorts of fun stuff. That was a staple yeah. of my diet. Not proud of it, but uh, j t 2 a.m. Jack in the Box tacos were a staple. Uh, are those still good? Have you tried one lately or, or no? Uh, or I have. So, like I said, there's one that's right by our house, which is why, like, it's just like a convenience factor that it's like a half mile away. Every now and again, when we need like a fast food fix or we're just in a hurry, we'll pick it up. And Charlie always does the tacos. And I've had them. They're, they're still good. They're good. They're those like little small. They've got the bigger tacos. They also have the mini tacos. That's what I like. Oh, I haven't even tried that yet. All yeah, right, well, they have little mini ones. They're so cute. <laughs> we could talk about that all day. Look, the NBA offseason is rough when it comes to hosting a show like this. Uh, you know, so five minutes in, we're still talking about the Jack in the Box. That's sometimes how it goes. Uh, nonetheless, um, there is some basketball action. Uh, there are pro-am tournaments. Um, Kate Jackson, by the way, says you look like you seem like the coolest. What does PR mean? I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> um person person yeah agreed Aww. uh so I, I agree i agree with that sentiment so uh jonathan kaminga played in his first pro-am ever and uh you know 
he scored 60 points. He uh, had six assists. He had five rebounds. Um, Pro-ams are not something you should like look that close into. Um, you know, it's an exhibition game. It's much more similar to an all-star game in terms of the level of defensive intensity. Uh, everyone's playing offense. Everyone wants to light it up. But defense, I don't know how, uh, you know, how serious they're taking it. But still, 60 points is 60 points. And he's 20 years old. I don't think we can, we can uh, you know, gloss over that enough. He's 20. He's not, still not old enough yeah. to buy beer. And he doesn't turn 21 until October. Um, he was incredibly young just for a player in his draft class. He really should have been in the following draft. Um, I'm excited about him. You know my adage, and it's actually my bio on, on threads, which is great things happen when Kaminga plays. Um, I love the kid. I love his attitude. Um, I think if he's given a serious run this year, we're going to see some amazing things. Um, what is your reaction? I mean, I don't know if, if you saw the highlights. I don't know if you saw any of it. Yeah. He looked oh, yeah. good. He's looked good all off season. I'm seeing all of his workout videos from his three city tour. I love Kaminga. I want me Kaminga. What are your thoughts on Jonathan Kaminga, Kylan? I think it's great to see the way Kaminga is performing at the Pro-Am up in Seattle. Uh, he looks electric. Like you mentioned, like that's not necessarily like a great litmus test for what we're going to see in the NBA season. But still, it's, it's really positive to see him. The most important thing to me, though, about what I've seen from him is that he looks like he has the joy back. He looks like he has that love of the game back because that was what was unusual about the way he finished out the season. For whatever reason, he was completely out of the rotation in the postseason, which I know he didn't start the postseason great, and he wasn't great in the series against the Kings, but I wanted him to get another chance when the Warriors faced the Lakers, especially with what they were dealing with, uh, you know, in terms of trying to defend AD, trying to shut down, you know, what the Lakers were doing in terms of their front court and size. I wanted him to get another chance. He never did, and then it just kind of seemed like there was a little bit of tension, and, and Jonathan Kaminga made those comments to the Chronicle about being a little bit frustrated about not being in the rotation. There was some criticism surrounding that. You could see it in his body language. He was hanging his head. He shoulder slumped. Like You can just read the way the players are acting in the huddle, on the bench, and to me, there was a noticeable difference that Jonathan Kaminga was not carrying himself well when dealing with that type of adversity. So I'm right. happy to see him back and just looking like he's enjoying himself. He's loving the game. And hopefully he carries that into the Warriors season in addition to a little bit more maturity should a situation arise again um, where he's not in the rotation and getting the time that he wants to get. The other big thing about what we've seen from Jonathan Kaminga in the offseason is something that you mentioned, the workout videos. To me, it looks like Jonathan Kaminga has been spending a ton of time in the gym. He has been lifting. He has been working on strength conditioning, speed, explosiveness. There have been a lot of videos that have come out on his Instagram stories, pages, different trainers he's been working with. And he looks like he is putting in major work in the gym. And that's exactly what the Warriors needed from him in this off season. That's exactly what he needed to do. That's how you respond to ending a season in a disappointing way amidst a lot of criticism, go in, put your head down and put in the work. And there's been some criticism of whether or not Jonathan Kaminga is really willing to do that. And to me, he's trying to put his money where his mouth is to prove that in some of his actions. So I hope that he comes out and looks great uh, when the Warriors finally get together for post preseason, because I'm very encouraged by what we've seen in the videos that have popped up on social media. Oh. Will it translate to when he gets back with the Warriors, we'll have to see. But I mean, I don't know about you, but like he has looked very fit and looks like he is putting in the work. So that's encouraging. Totally. He looks, I mean, someone asked about his height. He's listed as six, eight. Um, oh, stop. Are we going to talk about how he's seven foot now? Well, someone just brought it up. Like what his height was. No, no, no. That's I can't believe how many people felt. That's, that, but... that's so funny that that's like a running gag now that like people like to say that they, Jonathan Kaminga grew to six feet. Okay. Sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it, it's a ridiculous guy. Yeah. I, it, and few people ran with it. No, he's six, eight. Uh, that's what his listed height is. Same as Paul George. That's really the, the, the player, right? Let me ask you this, Kyle. And real quick, I want to go through these chats first, just because they're topical. Sean Stanley yeah. writes, if Kaminga takes that year three leap, uh, the Warriors can possibly win it all this coming season. I totally agree with you. To me, like the fortunes of the Warriors this year hinder so largely on Kaminga and how well he plays. I'm totally with you. Uh, David Sass writes, um, I don't know where you heard this trade proposal. I would not believe it. Uh, of Alex Caruso of the Bulls for Kaminga and Corey Joseph. I, I would not buy that. I don't know where you heard it from. Um, 
But let me ask you this, because uh, there's been a lot of attention when it comes to Jonathan Kaminga, uh, and we'll we'll come back for your answer, Kylan. But the, the, there's been, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, but I think there's an unfair focus on his rebounding. Um, like for example, the five rebounds he grabbed in the pro am. There were a few people out there that actually complained and said that wasn't enough. I don't see Jonathan Kaminga. I know I, I agree with people's sentiments that if he wants to find playing time. Uh, he's going to have to grab rebounds. He's going to have to play more like a power forward. I don't see him, though, as that type of player. To me, he's more of a swing. Uh, when I see him, again, I, I really see a Paul George type player. Uh, you know, people have brought up Jonathan uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard. I, I don't know if there's that similar in all honesty. But in terms of impact, I, I do hope the the uh, similarities there. But in terms of the types of players they are, I do think they're different. I think Kaminga's a lot more like Paul George. Like, he's gone faster. That's one thing I've noticed with, with his workout mm. videos this offseason. I'm seeing speed. Like, his indecisiveness, his, his slow dribbling, that's been replaced with, like, quick action with just hyper speed handles. He's got a crossover that I don't remember seeing a year ago. Um, but when we come back, I, I, what I want to ask you, Colin, and I'm curious to know about your opinion is, is it fair to expect Jonathan Kaminga to play like this power forward, like to have these rebounding numbers when maybe that's not who he is? I don't know. I, and this is where I want to get your, your opinion when we come back and maybe from the chat as well. Uh, Got to give some love first to FanDuel, uh, the official sports book of the Locked On podcast network they got an overlay here let me grab that real fast i always mess that up there we go uh football see look football season's here oh my god like i mean the niners have their first exhibition game this trey lance thing is out of control real fast kylan like what are your thoughts on trey lance like do you think he's unfairly criticized do you think that the criticism is about right um what are your thoughts on that because I, I feel like that's what everyone's talking about right now uh, I don't know that criticism is necessarily fair because there hasn't been a true evaluation period for Trey Lance. So I don't think the criticism of him is fair. I think the criticism of the 49ers organization is fair because the fact that there still is a quarterback saga being discussed <laughs> yeah. for the last four straight seasons is ridiculous. I mean, Trey Lance was supposed to be the guy, <laughs> and that's why they traded up for that pick. Yep. And the fact of the matter is – now we've got Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, who is the player that all of the 49ers hopes and dreams ride on this season. Everything I'm hearing from training camp, and I have a lot of friends who've been covering it. I've been out and around the sports scene. I haven't specifically been at it, is that Brock Purdy is who this team has full faith and confidence in. He's supposedly ahead of schedule in terms of his recovery, and he's looked really good. And the fact of the matter is the 49ers traded up for Trey Lance, and he's not going to be the starter. That to me is a big disappointment, but like for him individually, I don't think it's necessarily fair criticism. He's dealt with injuries. He's never really had the full faith of the organization to be the starter for a lengthy period of time. Right. I put a little bit of blame in terms of how the injury happened on the organization as well with him being run up the middle uh, so early in a game when it didn't need to happen. Yes. That's always a play that's going to result in a lot of contact. So anyways, we can go on and on about that. Um, I am very excited to see though, uh, what happens with the Warriors or with the Warriors with the 49ers season and the Warriors season, but with football being around the corner, FanDuel is definitely the place to go. Absolutely. There, there was so much to bet on with FanDuel, and I totally agree with everything you said there. Football season is about to kick off, folks. It's weeks weeks away, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long because right now when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. You just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on kylan when kevin dana was on the show a couple weeks ago he brought up the fact that folks in, in states like california where FanDuel is illegal uh you might be able to use that vpn action and circumvent those restrictions folks i'm not advocating for anyone to break the law i'm just pointing out what might be an option for you so visit fanduel.com slash locked on start earning those bonus bets again with america's number one sports book that's fanduel dot com slash locked on you are locked on warriors your daily golden state warriors podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day thank you for making locked on warriors your first listen every day for the everydayers i'm still waiting on confirmation for that warriors assistant coach uh apparently this individual was on vacation um, so now hopefully Raymond Ritter will come through and that'll be an upcoming guest. And next week, one of my 
heroes in broadcasting growing up. Hero is a strong word. I, I, I'm being a little facetious there, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar, Colin, with uh, Scotty Farrell. Um, he's he's been on Sirius XM for decades. He was on KNBR in the 90s. I remember my friends and I in high school calling his show up just so he could do one of his bits, which was the sound effect of a beer being cracked open. Um, if you really liked your take, you'd hear like a six pack or 12 pack. Uh, and then he introduced the keg. Anyways, if you're a juvenile like me, immature uh, in high school, you love these these uh, these segments. And then he ended up getting hired by Howard Stern, and he's still on Sirius XM to this day. So Scotty Farrell is going to join the program next week. Are you familiar with him? Like, do you know anything about him, Kylan? Uh, seen him in passing, but don't know a ton. Yeah, but he's old school. He's a, he's a little old school, um, but he's got this super raspy voice. Uh, I, I love him personally. So he's going to be on a, the guest on the program next week. Follow the program on Twitter uh, while Twitter still exists at Locked on Dubs. Yeah, wait uh, a second. Wait, you mean X? It's X, X on now. X at Twix. Twix. Yeah, on Twix. I'm sorry uh, to, to get all that I'm information. I'm still calling it Twitter. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, Twix. I've been yeah. I'm, I'm going to start calling it Twix. I guess. Twix. Uh, I love Twix. that. We'll call it um, so, so to answer the question, uh, is it is it fair or unfair, Kylan? And people, by the way, folks, you can follow Kylan Mills on all social media platforms at Kylan Mills. Uh, is it fair or unfair to put uh, like front court pressure on Jonathan Kaminga? Like, like if he doesn't grab ten rebounds a game, um, is that a negative? Is that is that a reason to criticize him? What are your thoughts on Kaminga's expectations? So I think that Kamiga is more of a small forward. I think that he is more comparable to playing a three, three or four, but I don't think he's a power forward. I agree with you on that. What I will say though, is that I don't think that rebounding is a hundred percent dependent on the position you're playing or even on your size. There were multiple times this season where Steph Curry led the Warriors in rebounding, which isn't necessarily a great reflection of the Warriors, but at the same time, he was just doing a good job of being in the right place, getting into the spots, beating his man, you know, reading the angle when the ball's coming off the, you know, hoop anticipation. Like those are all things that also players can do to be proactive in trying to bring in boards, even if they're not a power forward, a center or a player who is really, really big. So, so I kind of have a two-sided answer to your question. No, I don't think that he's best as a power forward. I totally agree with you in terms of expectations for him to rebound. Like, I do still think he needs to pull his weight in terms of the rebounding, whether he's playing a small forward position, whether he's playing a three. Like, even if the Warriors aren't the biggest team in the NBA, they have to have players who are going to be fighting for boards and, like, still hustling and, and doing the other things that you could do outside of size that you have control over to try to bring in rebounds. During the regular season, there definitely were times where he could have and should have maybe put up better numbers. But I just think, you know, the positives that he's bringing outweigh that to where, like, it's not a huge concern for me. But, like, yeah, something for him to be mindful of going into the season. But, like, I don't know that it's necessarily fair that he's going to be expected to be, like, this power forward who's going to be leading the team and rebounding every night. No. Like, yes, he needs to make a conscious effort of it. Could he maybe do a little bit better job? Yeah. But... You know, I also think it's a team thing because the Warriors, once again, are not going to be the biggest team in the NBA and they're going to have to make up for it, uh, you know, in some way, shape and form. And they're going to have to figure out ways to try to bring in boards. They can't get beat up every night and win games. Absolutely. I'm, I'm totally with you. Um, What is, you know, so in the chat here, uh, one of our long time, one of our everydayers, Andre FRBK uh, writes, if Jonathan Kaminga can, can't rebound eight plus a game, I don't like him. Eight rebounds a game is a lot. Uh, last year, his per 36, meaning his, his average stats to be played 36 minutes a game, uh, had him grabbing over six rebounds a game. I think it was like at 6.1. Um, do you have a measurable in mind, like a number in mind, that for Kaminga to reach on an average, uh, on a night-by-night -night basis, that would make you happy? Like, is five enough, six enough? Is there a number in mind for you? Yeah, if he was at over six per game, which I actually didn't know, that to me is good. Like that's, it, that's an average that I'm okay with. I'm happy with seven, I guess to me, seven maybe is a measurable. I think eight's getting a little bit high. Um, but I do have a question to flip back at you, Cyrus. Yeah. Someone asked in the chat a little bit earlier. And I really, really wanted to ask you because this has been a talking point we've both addressed. Someone asked, is Steve Kerr going to do Jonathan Kaminga right though this Ooh. year? And is he going to be fair in the opportunities he gives him? And that's a big part of the equation in terms of Jonathan Kaminga's development in year three is how is he going to be treated by this coaching staff? What opportunities is he going to get? Have they been doing everything they can to develop him? That's what I'm going to toss at you. Well, I'll say this. I, if, if Steve Kerr continues the act of 
of this short leash. Like, I don't think the Warriors won the title. I, I, I look at this roster and the deficiencies that they have to me are filled with Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody getting a legitimate run. And when we say legitimate run, um, look, positions one through five, each one has to fill up 48 minutes a night, right? Um, so Kaminga, if you, if he, I think to me, I think Kerr has to figure out a way to get Kaminga and Moody guaranteed night by night, 20 to 25 minutes at least. Um, now, whether or not they're going to do that, I do have a little faith in Kerr. I, I was actually, um, in the post game interviews, I was actually really pleased and elated that Kerr said the right things when it came to Kaminga. I don't know if you remember that soundbite and, and I'll try to pull that up for the next show where Kerr came out and, and said in response to Kaminga publicly complaining about his, his lack of role in the postseason and the limited minutes, mm -hmm. Kerr's response was awesome. He said that he liked the fact that Kaminga was frustrated. He likes having his players want to play more and contribute more. He didn't, he actually spun Kaminga's complaints in a positive light and that could have gone in any different direction. I mean, Kerr has not acted that way with every player. Um, in fact, one player who's going to be trying out either this week or next is Juan Toscano Anderson, who actually was on the roster for the 2022 World Championship team. And I have a theory, a, a little conspiracy-ish on why he has to try out when he was already a regular member of the team in the championship year. But the, And it has to do with Kerr's reaction to people uh, – expressing publicly complaints about the role of the team. The way he handled Kaminga, I think showed me that Kerr recognizes this team is going to need him this year. They're going to need his athleticism, his size. Um, there's no one else on the roster like him. I think Chris Paul um, could service himself tremendously for this team. If he actually leads Kaminga and to a lesser extent, Moody. Um, so a lot of this is wishful thinking, but based on what I've heard from Kerr and look, I, I've never once accused Kerr of being an idiot. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's an incredibly smart individual. He clearly knows his hoops. Um, I just think he, he, he last year, he made a, a major blunder by relying so much on these two way players and, and not on the youngsters that were there ready to go. Um, so I, I'm hoping he is smart enough to not repeat the mistake he made last year and I hope that answers that question. Did it? I don't know. That did. That totally did. <laughs> um, so fascinating to see. Oh, absolutely. Majorly fascinating. Totally. Um, and again, so, you know, uh, and Douglas Mike's here real fast. Have you, do you have a preference, by the way? And I'll, I'll reveal my Juan Toscano Anderson theory while, while we were on this to topic real fast. Um, but Douglas Mike's writes, uh, Harry Giles the third on a two way deal. Uh, Juan Toscano Anderson or uh, Glenn Robinson the third. Glenn Robinson the third, by the way, told me directly today uh, that he has been in San Francisco working out, but he could not be specific in terms of whether or not it was for the Warriors. But I agree, I would love Glenn Robinson the third. Um, and you can aggregate that, folks, by the way, if you want. That actually happened. Uh, so I, I would love Glenn Robinson the third on the Warriors. I'd love him back. I, I think Harry Giles uh, brings up a lot. Of potential with that size that he has. Um, injuries have taken a lot away from his career. Um, do you want to hear the Juan Toscano theory, the conspiracy, and, and then you can yeah, tell I want to. You got to, yeah, you got to come in hot with a conspiracy theory right now. All right, so I Before thought we it was the weird. Other stuff, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> so I thought it was weird, and I don't know if you thought it was weird, but but when the when uh, Shams Sharnia uh, uh, reported and, and no one contradicted him that. Um, the Warriors are going to try out six players, and it might actually be seven with Glenn Robinson III uh, in these next two weeks. The players included uh, Harry Giles III, Alec Burks, uh, which was kind of weird, um, Dion Waiters, another really weird one. Uh, you had some guards in there. Uh, uh, but Juan Toscano Anderson, did it seem, I guess before we go into this, did it seem weird to you that he has to try out for the team? I mean, I, that stuck out to me a little bit. Did that stick out to you at all? That That was weird to me. I don't know. Because he's he was a, a, a consistent member, a player. Like he was getting a good run on this roster, and they won a title. And now he's trying out. Like, is that weird to you? I don't know. I guess before I continue on, I'm curious to know if you think that's weird or if that's uh, perfectly normal. I think it's odd. I for sure think it's odd. I mean, JTA was whether or not he played a lot of minutes consistently night in night out was a big part of the Warriors championship team in 21, 22. Um, I mean, the bottom line is that the chemistry was one of the most important parts of that team. We saw it. It was very evident in the way the Warriors fell apart in 22, 23, when the season started off on a very different foot in things that I'm not going to name. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think that 
Juan Toscano Anderson brought a lot in terms of, you know, what you were going to going to get out of him as one of the players who's maybe, you know, lower down the roster, you know, outside the rotation. When he did get in, you were going to get a hundred percent. You were going to get hustle. He's probably going to go out there and bang some guys up and get called for a couple fouls. He's going to run down rebounds. He's going to make the hustle plays. He was very consistent in terms of what he can do and what you could expect from him. And then he brought that heart and energy that made that championship team so special. He is Oakland through and through, uh, could not be more proud of being from the East Bay, fit the chemistry piece, fit the build, brought the the professionalism that the Warriors expect, an extremely high class and high character person, uh, you know, and I just think it is it is strange. It does stand out to me about why he would have to try out when the Warriors, to me, he's one of the most consistent players in terms of what the Warriors got that season. Like, totally. yeah, he was lower in the rotation for a reason, but like, to me, he was very consistent in what you could expect versus like a Damian Lee would come out and like be lights out one night. And then another night, this man couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. And you'd be like, what <laughs> is going on here? Um, and like, sometimes he would look like a tr- cone on defense. Other times he wouldn't look as bad. Like, I don't know. I just feel like the consistency, you always got 110% from JTA. He would always bring in a couple boards, make in a couple hustle plays. And he was a guy that you could look to, to be that chemistry piece, to be hyping his teammates up and doing all the other intangible things that you look for. So why make him try out? He hasn't been gone for that long. They, the Warriors exactly. know what kind of player he is. Like, I don't <laughs> think anything has changed personally. Like, I don't think JTA's game has suddenly changed. Like, I don't. I'm totally with year. you. It's, so here's my conspiracy theory, and it could be totally okay. off base. I'm basing this on nothing except my own my own uh, observation uh, skills. If you call them skills, it, it, what my guess is is that it was there was a weird moment in 2022 when Juan Toscano Anderson. In an interview, and I don't know why this stuck out to me, but it did. He he came out and said, you know, I could be playing for other teams and 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 be playing a lot more minutes, but you know, be, I'm on the Warriors, so I'm making the sacrifice of not playing as many minutes. Sometimes sitting out every now and obviously, I'm I'm paraphrasing. These are not his exact words. I'll try to find the clip actually. But he basically, in essence, said that he's making sacrifices being on the Warriors when he could be playing a lot more uh, if he was on another team. And it was a weird quote. It, it was a, it was a little egotistical. Um, and, and the reason why it sticks out to me is because usually when other players say that, and that's why Kaminga, I'm a little surprised he survived publicly uh, complaining about his role in the postseason because uh, Quindary Weatherspoon, for example, he was a huge reason he's not with the team anymore is because he publicly came out and said he thinks he deserves a guaranteed deal. Uh, mm-hmm. and, I, and I've had sources tell me this, that the team did not like that. And I don't know if it meant Bob Myers, Kerr, whoever it was. They did not like him saying that, and suddenly he was gone. And Juan Toscano Anderson says this, and part of me does wonder if this is them kind of telling him, shut your mouth, like, like be free, be grateful that you're here, and that, and stop telling the media that you could be playing more if you were someone else. I could be totally wrong, but I just remember very vividly that soundbite of, of JTA saying that and thinking to myself, wow, like this, like, you know, like he's got, he really thinks highly of himself and it didn't sound awful or anything, but I don't know. That is my theory. Totally conspiracy ish. Could be wrong. Your thoughts on that. Wait, so when did he say that? That's what I want to know. Middle of the, tw- of the championship season. It was the middle of the title run. It was somewhere so in the middle. I will find that cut. I'll try to find yeah. it today, actually. We, the next yeah, we might have to dig that up because that's so interesting just because, you know, I was covering the team in person day in and day out. And whenever we heard from JTA, he seemed very humble and like the opposite of that. He would talk about like how much it means to him to be a Mexican-American representing yes. in the NBA, which, you know, is something that he, you know, is very unique. And, and it's something he was very proud of. He would come in and talk about his struggles and, you know, how hard he battled because he played overseas in Mexico. You know, he played in the G League about, you know, how difficult it was for him to climb up and make an NBA roster, how special it was to him, how much it meant to him. So it's very interesting that <laughs> I guess apparently the flip switched pretty quickly after he got that guaranteed spot from the Warriors that all of a sudden now, well, I could be playing more minutes if I run another team. It just it's not in his character of the way that he typically acted, at least not initially getting signed by the team always seemed very humble, very grateful, is a player who grinded to get here, was, you know, started at the bottom, 
And so I think that's very surprising. Now, in regards to your conspiracy theory, is it possible? Yeah, they're sending him a message. I'm not, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to see if I, if I can find that cut during today's show. Uh, that'll help a lot. But um, uh, this might be it right here. Uh, but I got a commercial running right now in terms of the, the clip I'm looking at. Yeah, if I can find it, I'll let you know. Because I remember when he said yeah. it, it seemed totally out of character. And I also remember thinking to himself, like, like how, how is the coaching staff going to take this? Um, so I, that's my conspiracy is that the team is trying. That could be totally wrong on it. This is us filling time in the middle of the offseason. But uh, who knows? Maybe the team is like, you know what? You really do think that? Try out for the team <laughs> or on your way back. Uh, because because otherwise, I it's it's bizarre to me that he's trying out with with Dion Waiters. Like, you're really going to you're going to put JTA, who was on your championship team, on the same level as as Dion Waiters and Alec Burks. It seems it's bizarre to me. It's just mm -hmm. off. Um, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, Dario, do you want to move on from the topic? Anything you want to add? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add? No, that's. Oh, good. Okay. That's all I got. 